Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us for the GATE Equity Webinar. Our topic today is Math 201, College Ready Math Initiative and Growth Mindset. Our slides are available on the GATE Equity Webinar page if you want to go there and make a copy. We do record our webinars and they're also on our web page in the archive session. The recording from today should be available by the end of the month. I want to thank Ronnie Larson for being in the room with us and monitoring the chat and the Q&A. Ronnie will provide links that we mentioned in this webinar throughout the webinar for your convenience. Webinar etiquette, uh, we thank you for muting your audio so we have a smooth presentation. We like to maintain a growth mindset. We are all learners here who want to help one another improve our practice. And as you engage in the webinar, we thank you for staying present and thinking deeply about our topic and how it can apply to your work. We also try to assume positive intent. And with that, we show respect for diverse viewpoints and opinion. We have a lot to, to, to present today, so I am going to make my part of this, the housekeeping part of it, short and sweet. I will turn it over to our presenters here in just a minute. By the end of this webinar, we want you to be able to familiarize yourself with College Ready Math Initiative, understand the importance of growth mindset for success in math, adapt strategies to your contact, get to ask questions of Bellingham School District about intensified algebra and academic youth development, and gain awareness of resources you can use to get started. So here are our speakers today. My name is Bonnie Zimmerman. I'm a program specialist with the Office of System and School Improvement here at OSPI. I have to my right is Barb Dietrich. She's dual credit program supervisor. And we have Kayla Gephardt, the Director of Professional Services at Agile Mind. Sharice Berner, Director of Teaching and Learning, Bellingham School District. And with her is Ray Ramos, a math teacher on special assignment with the Bellingham School District. Here at OSPI, we have vision, mission, values, all students prepared for post-secondary pathways, careers, and civic engagement. My team, the Office of System and School Improvement, we believe we're more likely to see school improvement across multiple measures if we study, support, serve, and elevate. And next month, I'm going to plug next month's webinar right now in May, on May 8th. It's Mental Health 101 and Mental Health 201. We have two webinars. Again, we'll be offering clock hours. There'll be some pre-reading. Please check in on the Gate Equity webinar page and you'll get that pre-reading and the instructions for getting clock hours if you attend both webinars. Right now, we're going to take a, a poll. We want to see who's in the room and who we're talking to. This helps us plan and tailor our presentation to the people that are listening. So if you would take I'm going to launch the poll. There we go. If you would please take the poll, I'll give you a few minutes. So while you're taking this poll, I want to let you know that Barb Dietrich, OSPI, dual credit, and CTE program supervisor will be doing the next part of the, the webinar. And so I'll turn it over to her as soon as we're done here. Looks like we have a lot of teachers in the room. Okay. Barb, I think we're ready. Thank you, Bonnie. So... Why are we talking about the College Ready Math Initiative? Why are we talking about mindfulness and math? Well, the answer is that we're looking at evidence-based strategies and programs through this uh, initiative. Uh, it's designed to improve student performance in STEM courses, including math. And it combines a growth mindset curriculum with pre-algebra and Algebra One students. Specifically, we're, we're looking at students that are behind and helping them to get up to where they need to be. So here's the need. Many ninth grade students are one or two years behind in math. If you're in ninth grade and you're not ready for algebra, you are behind. High school students, on the other hand, need to pass the Smarter Balanced Assessment in 11th grade. So incorporating mindset concepts with math instruction helps students to pass courses and assessments to graduate on time. So that's the need. In the uh, today, we're going to be describing a very successful project, the College Ready Math Initiative. And while we're describing this project, we're going to talk about a lot of uh, partners that we have and uh, schools that were involved. We're going to talk about courses that are offered through Agile Mind. Now, 
if folks are interested in expanding or looking at these courses, they are not limited to the College Ready Math Initiative that we're describing, the successful project. And instead, they may be interested in funding the program in other ways, and learning about our project can inform them about how well it works with students. Uh, possible funding sources include uh, Title I and LAP funds. So here are our partners. College Spark Washington is a private foundation, and they are the funder of the College Ready Math Initiative. Agile Mind has provided the curriculum for the courses that we are using in the College Ready Math Initiative. The BERT group are our evaluators, and they are uh, helping us understand how successful the initiative is. The University of Texas at the Charles Dana Center has uh, another component of our evaluation. They're looking at student attitudes and teacher attitudes, principal attitudes, and how they may change over time because of this initiative. They are also the ones who vetted the curriculum. And finally, here at OSPI, in teaching and learning and system and school improvement is where I work and we're the last partner uh, to help the uh, schools get involved. So the purpose of the College Ready Math Initiative is because of the need that I expressed earlier to learn math and mindset skills so that students can excel on the smarter balanced assessments and reduce the need for remediation both in high school and when they go on to college. We want them to graduate career and college ready, including certificates for science, engineering, and math. We have three cohorts that have started at different times in this math initiative, and the folks who are going to talk to us today from Bellingham are part of cohort one. So they've got four years of experience, and we can see uh, how they have been able to succeed. Currently, our cohort one are in year four. There were 23 schools. Cohort two is currently in year two of four, and as this is a four-year grant, and there are 12 schools there. And finally, we started cohort three this year, which is currently in year one, and we have 25 schools in that cohort. Our measures of success are varied. First of all, building level data reports on student and teacher attitudes and beliefs. Those are very important to us. If mindset is an important component of math, we should see those attitudes and beliefs change in a positive direction. We also want to measure building level data on student achievement. How are students doing on their uh, math assessments? We want to look at remediation rates for these students, whether they have to be remediated in math if they're able to go successfully forward onto geometry and to uh, the other courses they need to graduate from high school. And finally, we're going to look at graduation rate. So what we're going to be talking about today are two courses. We're going to be talking about intensified algebra, which is a course that infuses mindset into the teaching of algebra and is uh, designed for students that are one to two to three years behind where they should be. We're also going to be talking about school year academic youth development. This is a course that is often used in advisory at the middle school level. And it is also about mindset and positive mindset and growth. So those are the curriculum components. And now we're going to have Kayla from Agile Mind explain more in depth about these courses. As the Director of Professional Services for Agile Mind, my role is to help our district partners achieve their goals through the use of our programs and resources. And so I, along with my team of advisors, collaborate with leaders to craft um, their implementation plans, which includes a customized blueprint for initial and ongoing support. And so I really have the opportunity to be on the ground with our partner districts in the West. And before we dig into our programs, I'd like to share a few things about our organization. For over 15 years, Agile Mind has collaborated with key research and development partners to provide quality teaching and learning resources in middle and high school math and science. We also have programs in social and emotional learning for both adolescents and educators. Can you see some of our key offering partners and research partners on your screen as well? Our key author for our mathematics program is the Charles A. Dana Center at the University of Texas at Austin that Barb mentioned earlier. So the Dana Center is a research unit dedicated to ensuring that all students have the opportunity to thrive in school and are prepared for success in higher ed and the workforce. Dr. Uri Treisman is the founder of the Dana Center and a math professor at UT Austin. So take a moment to read the quote on the screen from him. Some of you might have heard Uri speak at NCSM in San Diego last week. 
If not, or if you this is the first time you're hearing about him, he developed the Emerging Scholars Program when he was at UC Berkeley, one of the first to apply the strategies from psychology to academics. Originally created to increase minority students' achievement in college math and science, the program was so successful that it was scaled up to hundreds of universities around the country. So now these practices are really at the heart of the work that we do here at Agile Mind. So what do these social and emotional ideas actually look like at the middle and high school level? On your screen, you see some of the key learnings that Agile Mind focuses on in our program. I'll give you a moment to look them over. You may be familiar with Carol Dweck's work related to growth mindsets. It is just one of the powerful ideas that our programs bring to teachers and students. We also want to instill in students the ability to persist through challenges and the belief that they can be successful. In addition, success in academic situations comes through metacognitive awareness of our own thoughts and feelings and development of the skills to actually manage those thoughts and feelings. And finally, students need a sense of belonging with adults and peers and the feeling that they are safe in their environment, um, safe enough to take risks and challenge themselves to grow. And as educators, we know that these ideas can sometimes be the difference between success and failure for many of our students. But beyond just talking about these ideas with students, our approach allows students to apply them to the work they do in school every day. So we do this by, one, teaching the research ideas explicitly in ways that are, that are engaging and accessible to adolescents. Two, by equipping students with specific strategies to help them solve complex problems, to collaborate and to organize their learning. And three, having students practice and apply their new ideas and strategies in challenging academic contexts that are engaging and relevant to them. The social and emotional ideas and learning process that we just discussed are at the heart of the three programs I'll focus on today. These programs are being utilized by districts participating in the College Ready Math Initiative as well as other districts across the country. School year academic youth development, or school year AYD for short, is currently showing in the middle of your screen. This program is typically taught during advisory, homeroom, or after school programs for students in grades eight through 10. The curriculum teaches students self-management strategies to take control of their learning and to persist in the face of challenging schoolwork. Students are guided through collaborative problem-solving opportunities um, and opportunities for reflection that teach them key concepts from the psychology of learning and help them build trust, teamwork, and collective responsibility. An educator's course in academic youth development on the far right of your screen is a professional learning experience for faculty teams in schools and districts interested in learning how to apply the powerful emerging research strategies on learning mindsets to their practice as educators. It includes a one-day face-to-face seminar followed by an independent study of the research and facilitated online community reflections. And finally, Intensified Algebra, or for the Integrated Pathway, Intensified Integrated Math 1 on the left of your screen uses an asset-based approach that builds on student strengths and helps students to develop academic skills and identities by engaging them in the learning experience. It's a comprehensive program for an extended time algebra or math one class that helps students who are one to three years behind become successful in algebra one or math one within a single academic year. Let's take a look at our intensified program design. The design framework that you see here reflects the strategies, the research-based strategies that are known to have the greatest impact on struggling students. So it's a pretty, um, complex diagram. I'll, I'll give you a second to, to look it over. The curriculum is rigorous but accessible with strategic opportunities to scaffold learning and address deficiencies integrated throughout the program. So for instance, this could look like intentionally practicing a relevant math six standard immediately before engaging in a related grade level scenario. We call this a just in time rather than just in case approach to repairing gaps in learning. We also equip students to persist in problem solving by consistently incorporating the social emotional learning ideas and strategies we just spoke about throughout the intensified course. We know that helping students, str struggling students succeed is challenging work. 
Our program is designed with robust supports for educators, both embedded and face-to-face -to, -face to ensure that teachers in the classroom have the tools and resources they need to be effective. Districts that are a part of the College Ready Math Initiative are implementing a combination of the three programs I just referenced. Now in year four of the College Ready Math Initiative, the project third-party evaluators that Barb spoke about earlier, the Burke Group and the Dana Center, have reported some exciting results while the data from the study is still being finalized, we have some early quotes from teachers that I'd like to share with you that are on your screen right now. Some teachers shared that intensified algebra, as you can see here in the first few quotes, is helping students change their relationship with math. Others commented on the social emotional learning component of intensified algebra, claiming noticeable differences in students' productive persistence and self-efficacy both inside the IA classroom as well as in other content areas. And the last few quotes here um, relate to this idea of educators also um, seeing evidence of academic outcomes in addition to the social emotional learning outcomes. And so the intensified algebra teachers generally indicated that students who passed the IA course, which they reported to be the majority of their students, would be ready for geometry. And in some cases, those teachers thought that the IA students would be more prepared than their regular Algebra 1 peers, pointing to the intensified program's emphasis on problem solving and conceptual understanding as the pieces that really gave these students a leg up. A link to College Spark Washington, um, where they will have more detailed results, will be posted and shared after the presentation as well. I shared a little about our programs in the context of the College Ready Math Initiative, but we have many districts across the country outside of the initiative that are utilizing um, the programs you saw today as well as, as a selection of our other core program offerings that you can see on your screen here. In fact, our math and high school core program offerings are among the few programs in the country that are top rated by Ed Reports for both middle and high school. If you'd like to learn more information about any of our programs, my colleague Kristen Armstead will be happy to help and her information is here on the screen and I'm sure we'll share it afterwards as well. Now we're going to have another polling question. And the question is, how important is mindset in math? You could take a couple of minutes and answer this. We'll uh, share the information when we're done here. Okay, I think we're all in agreement that uh, it's really important to have a good mindset in math. Our next presenters from Bellingham School District are going to show us what a successful program looks like. And we're really lucky to have Sharice Berner, Director of Teaching and Learning, and Ray Ramos, math teacher from Bellingham School District. School District has a strategic plan called the Bellingham Promise, and the Intensified Algebra Program and the College Ready Math Initiative was a lovely alignment to our promise outcomes of the whole child is important, that every child learns at high levels or can learn at high levels. And an example of one of our outcomes is we develop confident individuals who continuously challenge themselves. So. These pieces really lined beautifully um, with our desired outcomes as a district, which is why we applied. So we are, as was said earlier, we are in year four of our four-year grant. And in 2014, um, we adopted Agile Mind curriculum as our core math curriculum. And so we had it started that year in Algebra, Geometry, and Algebra 2. And I think we're a bit unique in uh, the grantees. That I don't know that there were many other grantees that were already using Agile Mind curriculum. So that was a helpful piece for our intensified algebra teachers when we brought it in with a grant in 2015. So we used lab funding to provide the staffing we needed for the second class period for intensified algebra. And we added it to all three of our comprehensive high schools. In the same year, we added academic youth development at Shuxon Middle School. And then the following year, the second year of our grant, we had 55 of our educators, including teachers and administrators, participate in the educator academic youth development course, which was a great way to think about using that is to think about your freshman teachers, the teachers that typically would uh, teach courses to freshmen, other courses, English, history, PE, whatever courses you expect your freshmen are going to be taking, and kind of 
create this atmosphere at the ninth grade level of growth mindset during that important transition year. So again, we targeted our ninth grade students that had not taken algebra before. Typically they were level two achievement, whether it was the smarter balance or our map level testing, we we're, or even classroom performance, and typically students with low confidence about mathematics. We've had between six and seven sections district-wide, typically around 18 students in each section. We limited the sections to 25 by the grant assurance, but we typically kept the classes smaller than that. And we've aim to have two teachers at each school. And that depended on whether or not we had two sections at the school, but it was great to have that professional learning partner at the school if you have more than one section. That's a, an ideal to shoot for. But we also assumed over the course of the years as our math program got stronger, we might see fewer sections of intensified algebra and that's actually starting to happen. In the first year, we established an algebra professional learning community as part of our professional development plan and they met frequently during that first year and the second year, and they co-created the grading guidelines for the course. One section they grade for the mathematical content and the other section is graded like an elective. So they shared and uh, created those grading guidelines. We had regular professional development sessions with our Agile Mind advisor and with our teacher on special assignment. And it, that was a different teacher on special assignment and different advisor than we have this year. In fact, Kayla was our advisor during that that time. We use the intensified algebra print material with our intensified uh, algebra class along with technology and we use grant funds to help us beef up our technology at that time. Uh, we're fortunate now starting last year 17-18 we went one-to-one -one at Squalicum High School and this year we're now one-to-one -one at Bellingham and Seahome so that has really removed the it was a little more challenging to get it our technology robust enough before, but this is, it's, you don't have to have one-to-one, -one, but it makes it really great. I'm going to hand over to Ray to tell you a little bit about some added professional development we've done. So if there's one thing that you can conclude from every research about math classrooms in the world is that very little has changed in the hundred years. It's still the teacher talking, the students are on their desk, writing, copying, regurgitating the same information. Now with the Bellingham promise, one of the promise we said and we set out for is that we will develop students who are critical thinkers, mathematicians and science. And the part of the conversation long before I arrived to Bellingham was, well, if that's the case, then the method of over direct instruction, as we call it, just wouldn't work because you won't develop critical thinking in that sense. So we looked into other models and one of the model is visible thinking classrooms. And if you think of the traditional classroom and the, versus the visible thinking classroom, they're very different. In a traditional classroom, you would see, again, students just being writing, copying, regurgitating information. In visible thinking, everyone is talking in their groups Everyone was selected through randomization. They're solving very thick math problems. In a sense, we're de defronting the classroom because every part of the classroom is being used and it's not the teacher in the front teaching and just filling the information. We've done this and not only in collaboration with the teachers in Bellingham, but we did this with uh, Linden School District with Sidra Woolley School District, and we were lucky enough that our Agile Mind advisor, Andrew, was able to participate with us. So one of the things this year that we're doing is integrating our curriculum, which is Agile Mind, and our visible thinking methodology. And we found that they really work well, especially when it comes to choice of problems. So this has really been an ongoing initiative for us. This has really been a good experience um, for the teachers who are participating. And in the near future, we're going to expand this and we're actually expanding it. And we're now also looking into including our middle school teachers. But the bottom line is when we think of visible thinking classrooms, the thinking of the students are visible. They're not invisible. We all see them, everyone sees their solution, and everyone is participating. So this really goes back to our college and re college readiness initiative. Students are taking the MAP assessment, 
and then the smarter balance. We're using the surveys, the grades, the math courses, and so forth to try to measure our effectiveness, and we're also using the Burke Group study. So here are some examples from that, the Burke Group and the Dana Center study about the survey. So this is Dana Center end of, end of year survey, and I'll give you a moment just to read the slide. So it's important to notice that there are different colored bars. Medium blue shows the before rating and the dark blue shows the mid-year survey results and then light blue end of year. And this final year, we're only gonna be doing a mid and an end of year because they were able, the study is just as powerful to do those two pieces as doing three surveys, which is nice to take a little of that load off of our teachers. And then you'll notice there's an improvement table which shows the percentage of, on average, of the improvement and its self-perception. So it's been, for our students, as you heard earlier from Kayla, we have some pretty powerful stories of students who hated math, to stu for whom, you know, the wildest one was someone who hated math to, this is my favorite class. It was a dramatic shift in their own perception of themselves as a learner and of the content they were learning. So here you see the statewide results for last year, 860 students in intensified algebra. And I'll give you a minute just to notice the percent improvement over the course of, the, of that year and just take a look at how each of those attributes that were measured improved over time. And of course, we see the most dramatic shift from the beginning of the year to that mid-year, uh, but still we tend to see improvement over time. So let's take a look at Belling, how Bellingham fared next. So this is just one of our high schools. We don't have time to go through all the slides that we could show you, but Bellingham High School had some really lovely improvement. And you'll see even from mid-year to end of year, we typically see improvement or at least staying similar. Give you a moment to read that. So we also implemented school year academic youth development at Shuxon Middle School. And as you heard earlier, it's ideal when it's a whole school advisory or a whole after school or in some way, I think probably the ideal is through an advisory. We don't have an advisory at our middle schools. So we shifted the implementation. We started years one and two one way, and then we tried it a different way in years three and four. The first two years, we had students who were in a math strategies or a literacy strategy support class take the school year AYD. This last two years, we've had uh, used it for an extended learning class period and just had the students that were assigned to the, that class period take it and had, we had more students involved, which was, we thought, beneficial. And it was compacted into a nine-week everyday course. And so we'll be, it'll be interesting to watch how those outcomes change over time. So in the case of school year academic youth development, we had summer and ongoing professional development, just like we did with the intensified algebra and same advisor, same same group of people surrounding it. So here's the statewide academic youth development totals. I'll give you a moment to check out that. And you'll notice there's a, in this case, there's a mid-year and a before and a mid-year. And then let's take a look at the Shuxon Middle School. All in this particular slide, we didn't have all the responses in. And I think we've had a couple challenges with our data because we shifted our model. But again, we have we think it's important to be asking these questions and we, we like to see the fact that we have growth. So we have a couple lessons learned. Uh, I think our biggest takeaway is having a strong team of a school administrator, could be a principal or assistant principal, a lead counselor, a department leader or a lead math teacher, along with the teachers that are enacting the courses, along with myself as the director and Ray as our teacher on special assignment, we work together for the strongest enactment of the programs, particularly, well, with either school year AYD or intensified algebra, really important to select a teacher who has a growth mindset themselves, someone who loves to work with students who are not confident in the beginning, and uh, they really, that person really brings a benefit to students that's different than uh, sometimes with sometimes when we, when teachers are assigned to a class and this is the this is the class of kids that have struggled sometimes we put our newest teacher in there rather than think about the, in this case I think it's really critical to pick someone with that strong growth mindset someone who's maybe even your strongest teacher and someone who loves to work with learners who are struggling a little bit 
And we have a great partnership with our Agile Mind advisor, Andrew, and he, we've partnered with Kayla and her team, but we've hosted a summer institute every summer. And then we have embedded professional development throughout, including modeling lessons for teachers, studio work, co-teaching, co-planning, all of that. And again, we've had an intensified algebra professional learning community, dedicated time to learning together as a as a team of IA teachers, and we even invited some teachers from other school districts in our region who only may have a few teachers teaching intensified algebra. It's important that your students have access to technology if you're going to use intensified algebra. It doesn't have to be one-to-one, -one, but important to have that access to technology. Again, I would say it's important to figure out your grading practices before you start implementing because there are two class periods and to get clear about what you're, what you're assessing. And then College Spark Board provided funding for a geometry toolkit that was added to, to geometry from Agile Mind. And because all of our students take geometry, we've used that toolkit in all of our geometry classes. If you were a district that didn't have that ability, then I would say it may be important, and we may be thinking about this as well, is targeting our students into a particular section of geometry together. Many of our students have come to us and said, where is intensified geometry? I want this same kind of class next year. They love the fact that their teacher is in it for their success. They love it that their classmates are in it for their success. They love the culture that's developed in the classroom. They like the community that's built in the classroom. So I've had parents come ask me for it. I've had teachers ask us for it. I've had students ask us for it. So I think we just need to continue to emulate the practices that are part of this in our geometry courses. So there you go. We're going to do a, another evaluation on to today's webinar. If you'll answer for us. That'll be great. That'll help us in preparing for our next webinar. And uh, while we're doing that, Barb is going to share some resources with you. One of the things that we have uh, linked to is to Agile Mind so that you will be able to get more information about the courses that were presented today. Also a link to College Spark, the funder. There is a uh, significant article there on the College Spark site about the evaluation for the College Ready Math Initiative. It shows a lot of the data that the Burke Group has reported in, in terms of students' ability to uh, do math and to uh, achieve. And the results are stunning and very, very positive. We also have a link to the University of Texas at Austin for the Dana Center if you're interested in the work that they're doing with College Mindset. And finally, I would urge you to look at the link for the Wapato School District College Spark video. This is a video that College Spark was able to uh, put together. It's fascinating. Wapato is a very high performer in cohort one. You'll get a look at the school, you'll get a look at the kids in the uh, intensified algebra program. You'll be able to hear what the teachers have to say about how it really changed the way that they teach math and how much more positive it is, and also the carryover that went on the students in the math course and intensified algebra, how that carried over to other courses that they took as a positive attitude, helping them do better in their other core courses. And so those resources are all valuable, and we hope that you will be able to use them. So all of our graphics are we like to give credit where credit is due and if you'd like an image from the gate webinar many of our images come from the noun project we take the artist in the alternate tech here's contact information for your presenters today barb kayla sharice ray and me i'm bonnie we are happy that you are here with us but as we wrap up today we encourage you to take a minute reflect on the webinar and discuss the questions that you see on your screen you can use the chat, the people around you, or just jot down some thoughts on a sticky note. We're going to be here for a little bit. If you have any questions, please type them into the Q&A or the chat, and we will see if we can get an answer for you. Thank you, and we'll see you next month as we explore mental health. Kayla, uh, we have a question in the chat room that we would like to ask you. The question is, is there a good way of implementing this into an alternative program that does not require daily attendance, but is technology-based? I would say that we do have some alternative programs that are implementing a select 
version of our program. And so I would Glenn, I, I would love to set up a conversation with you and or Kristen to set up a conversation with you to learn a little bit more about the structures that you have in place so we can kind of see which program makes the most sense, if any, for your students. Thank you. Well, as we wrap this up today, we want to again really thank our contributors. So Kayla, thank you so much. Sharice and Ray, thank you so much. This was a very interesting presentation. We had a lot of interest from the audience and we are very grateful that you were able to help present with us today. See you next month. Yep. See you next month.